So let's do a mic test. I'm hoping everybody can still hear me. I have a few more people now and um, we tested this before. I know my head looks funny. It's because I'm sitting on the floor. We're using a new device and I think it's going to allow me to record, which I couldn't do before. It's taken a week for me to figure out some of these things. So with everything, we're just saying be patient and tolerant and have compassion. <clears throat> So I'm gonna look and see if somebody put on the chat, yes, I can still hear you, even though I'm recording. And where did that go? Oh, good, thank you. I got a note that we're good. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna scooch back to my mat. Give me a minute. Good morning. So with this new device, I think you can still hear me and still see me if I sit on the floor. I'm gonna try that now. I can still see me, so I'm hoping you can too. Welcome, it's Saturday morning, I'm in the studio and it feels really strange not to see your bright, shiny faces. This is one of the best parts of my Saturday morning is when I get to share it with my yoga friends. But we're gonna do it the way we're supposed to be doing it. We're being conscious citizens right now, staying apart, doing our streaming instead of live classes. So I appreciate you being here. Um, so I wanna just reiterate gratitude even though it could be really easy to get a little harsh, um, perhaps a little hard and um, critical at this time, when there's so much uncertainty and people are just feeling off their centers. But you know, um, I'm still grateful. I have a home, I have food. You know, people are like, I have to stay home. No, I get to stay home. I actually have a home, I have food, I have shelter. I have a job I love that I'm still able to do in some form. So there's a lot right in my life, even though there is that uncertainty. So just know that gratitude is always a practice and a choice that we make. I'm not trying to preach, I know it's sounding a little preachy, but if you haven't felt grateful lately, I encourage you to find three things every day that you are grateful for no matter how small they seem, you know, a beautiful flower that you see, your dog that you enjoy his company, it can be anything big or small. But when we take that attitude of gratitude, I call it, it's amazing how our mood will shift. Um, the other thing, and I've said this before, is when we're starting to feel down, maybe even start to suffer, I would like you to remember these words that Gandhi spoke. He said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service to others. That's all about karma yoga, reducing your suffering in the world, but also that helps our suffering diminish when we serve. Um, maybe even something as easy as devoting the fruits of this practice that you're going to do right now. So let that sit, roll around in your brain, see if that feels right for you. <clears throat> it's just a suggestion. Everybody has to try stuff on for themselves, see if it's true for them. But my job is to be the, um, I like to say the tour guide on this path. I'm still figuring it out for myself, but Maybe I can give you a hint and lead you in a direction that ends up working for you. So again, I'm grateful for you, your presence today and every day, because you guys are with me even when we're apart. So let's get started. Um, take a seat, whatever that looks like for you. I'm using a blanket and um, that helps my hips be elevated a little, allowing the low back to extend. The other thing that I like to do is to twirl my thighs inward. So to do that, 
We take the thigh and twirl with our hands so the inseam of the pants goes in and down towards the middle and then to the floor. Do the second leg as well so both legs have rolled in and down. Lean forward and pull the buttocks flesh straight back. Maybe now your sit bones feel more grounded since the flesh has been moved away. You might feel like you want to pull the sides of your waist back a little, not rounding the spine, but letting it be in neutral. Let the shoulders be relaxed and slide the sides of your throat back ever so slightly. Maybe the back of your head now lines up with the back of your sacrum, and that's a good thing. Your palms can be down on the thighs for very grounding, or perhaps turned upward, ready to receive whatever gifts the universe has in store for you. If this is a spiritual practice for you, take the forefinger and thumb together to make a circle. This is called Chin Mudra, and um, it signifies the individual ego bowing to the divine. So play around with that. See which one works for you today. This is one way we get in the moment or in the present moment, which is the whole point of yoga, so that we can be very fully conscious as our life takes place. Once this is in order, you have it just right, close your eyes gently. Allow the breath to flow in through the nostrils. And when you're ready, allow the breath to flow out through the nostrils. We'll do this several times, letting the mind's eye stay down at the tip of the nose or the base of the nostrils, allowing us to have a focal point, which allows us to stay more present. Do notice if perhaps you're furrowing your eyebrows or clenching your teeth or any other thing we do with our bodies. Just let it go with the next breath. Imagine softening those areas. And the breath allows the body to become a little softer. We become more receptive. So the softening of the boundaries will allow us to receive. Take a few more breaths and set that intention of either being able to receive more fully or maybe it has something to do with being grateful. So we take our hands from the lap, place them together at our hearts for Anjali Mudra, the prayer pose. We inhale deeply and then exhale it all the way. Let's inhale fully for Om. Oh. Follow me. Sukha Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu They all beings everywhere They all beings everywhere Be happy and free happy and free. May the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life, may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way, contribute in some way to that happiness, to that happiness, to that freedom, to that freedom for all, for all. Oh. To that 
true teacher within, we bow, placing the hands on the floor, and maybe wiggle around a little bit, feeling your body, seeing how you're doing today. When you're ready, walk your hands towards you, sit up tall, and take the hands back behind you. Lean on those so you can switch the feet and then press into the earth as you inhale and get long through the spine. Pull the belly button back as you exhale, hold over a second time. And make sure you breathe. Very good. And then let's walk it back up to tall. All right. We're going to be in a seated uh, position for a few breaths. So if you prefer the other leg in front, go ahead and switch back. And let's just do a little bit of um, seated cat cow. The hands will be on the knees. Let me just stop here. If this is not super comfortable, you can always do this next part with the legs bent, knees pointed up, feet are on the floor. This works just as well if your hips are starting to feel weak. So take care of you and know that there's always options. Sorry, I didn't think about that before. So here we are, hands are on the knees regardless of where you have your feet. And then let's press into hands. As you lift your heart, you inhale and open from pubic bone to throat. On the exhale, if your hands are, I mean, your legs are crossed, pull the hands to center and your belly button pulls back as you look down. So you're rounding the spine in cat. Come to the front of the sit bones, hands to knees, lift your heart as you inhale, maybe look up. On the exhale, go back again, strong tummy to spine action, rounding the spine, look down. Two more. Inhale, open the front body. And exhale, open the back body. One more. Inhale. And then exhale back again into the cat. And come back to neutral. If you are good with a cross-legged position, keep that. You might want to change which legs in front. And let's draw the arms wide enough on the inhale. Really reach from the sit bones to the hands, but let the shoulders go. Let's flip the hands and exhale. Squeeze the underarms like you're pushing through mud. Really activate the arms on the way down. We'll do that three more times. So inhale, lifting the arms from the heart wide out through the fingertips. Shoulders relax. And when you exhale, flip palms. Slide your throat back a little if you feel your head going forward. Keep the head over shoulders. Inhale, wide heart, lift the arms. And then exhale, push through the mud. Make sure you're breathing in and out of the nose. If you know Ujjayi breath, use it. Inhale, lift your arms. And then exhale, push it away. Good, we're gonna go into twisting. Keep your hips super still as you inhale, raise your arms. Now the hip bones stay start up forward. Exhale, twist to the right, placing your left hand on the knee and the other hand behind you on the floor. Lift your arms when you're ready to inhale. Go through center, hips stay forward. As you exhale, twist to the left, right hand on knee, other hand behind. Lift your arms, inhale, come through center. Go to the first side as you exhale. And inhale, lift it up again. Grounded sit bones as you exhale to the second side. Good, and inhale back to tall. Stay here in the middle. Exhale, squeeze the underarms and bring those hands back down. Take the hands to the knees or the thighs. Slide your throat back and let's do some shoulder circles. And breathe as you do so. Getting rid of those tight boundaries. Let's get soft. Take it around the other way. And again, the throat slides back a little. Very nice. We're coming on to hands and knees for what we call tabletop. If you have any knee issues, you may need to double your mat under the knees. Or if you have a blanket or beach towel, open it up a bit, make it a little bit flatter, not so thick, and you could put that under your knees. As we turn our attention to face the short end of the mat, I'm gonna to begin to call that the front of your mat. And know that I'll have to turn my head sideways, and I know it's difficult to do the poses when you have to look to the side. But maybe you could just follow my audible or verbal instructions rather than having to turn to look at the um, camera. I would rather you keep a neutral neck if possible. So let's take the hands under the shoulders. <clears throat> the center of your wrist lines up with the outer shoulder, and you want the wrist creased where your wrinkle is where the hand and arm come together. Make that 
parallel to the front short edge of your mat. Your knees are being about hips width apart, and so are your feet. On the exhale, press your hands and knees, lift your belly button and breastbone as you drop your tail and your head for cat. Inhale, take your tail back and slide your armpits back and pull the heart forward, lift up through the heart. Exhale, push your hands and knees, pull your belly up high and look down between your knees. Inhale your tail back, armpits back, lift your heart forward and up. Good, come to neutral. We'll do bird dog, keeping your left knee directly under the hip. The toe can be pointed or flexed where the toenails show. Extend the right leg fully, placing the ball of the right foot on the floor. Hug the two forearms below the elbows toward each other. Be strong there in those arms. And lift your right leg, straighten that leg, and flex the foot like the foot's against the wall. Make sure your leg only comes as high as your hip, and pull your tummy a little bit towards spine to protect your back. Slide your throat back towards the ceiling. Keep the neck in neutral. It's easy to let it drop. As you slide your left hand forward, see if you can take it off the floor. You don't have to lift the eyes to look where the hand is. That might crunch your neck too much. One more breath, hug the leg towards center for more stability. And then exhaling, the hand and knee come back down. Good, let's do the other side. Right knee directly under right hip. Stretch out through the left leg from inner groin through inner heel. Hug the two forearms towards center and slide your throat back. Let's lift the left leg so that it's parallel to the floor and hug the thigh in towards the other thigh. Keep that and breathe. See if you can slide your right hand forward. If it needs to stay on the floor, stay there or raise your right hand to point at the wall in front of you. Soften that right shoulder as best you can. One more breath from the heart, get even bigger. And when you exhale, take it down. The knee comes under the hip. We're going to child's pose, so let's widen the knees almost as wide as your mat. Point your toes and bring the big toes toward each other. Sit your buttocks back on the heel. If this hurts your knees, put your blanket or beach towel behind your bottom under the seat between the heels and the buttocks. Your hands can stay out in front for more active child's pose, or perhaps the hands come under the forehead or if you need even more support, take your book or your block under the forehead. Be where you can actually let go. It's not supposed to be too much work where you're in child's pose for a reason. We need a little break. So embrace that fully. And then if you are using a block, move it to the side and walk yourself back up to all fours. So we're gonna use those actions in our um, little vinyasa we're getting ready to do. Uh, some of you have done this with me in live classes, but I wanna review it for those who have not. The hands look like they were in table. The legs and feet look like they were in child's pose. On the exhale, we're gonna round the spine for cat and keep breathing out as we sit the buttocks back to the heels. On the inhale, the elbows come down in line with the shoulders, and you come forward, pressing into the hands so the arms are straight. What I want to caution you is when we come forward and up, the tendency is to have the elbows wide. That rolls the shoulders forward. So you'll be in cat rounding back to child's, and when you put the elbows down, do the best you can to have wrist, elbow, and shoulder in one line. Come forward like that and press the arms straight. This is not what we want. This is the do picture. This is the do picture. Okay, so you'll have two movements per breath. Let's go. As you inhale, stay put. On the exhale, round the spine, cat. Keep breathing out, sit back, child. Don't stop. Inhale, elbows down as wide as shoulders. Come forward and press the thumb side of the hand to straighten arm. Exhale, rounding the spine for cat. Sit back for child. Inhale, elbows down, look forward, heart comes between the arms and you press, two more like that. Exhale, round, really stretch it back to 
child. Inhale, come forward and up. One more, exhale. And inhale. Good, and stay here. Nice job. So we're coming to standing. Take care of you doing that. You may need to tuck the toes, bring the knees a little closer together, and then walk yourself up to standing. All right, find Tadasana, mountain pose. The feet will be about hips width apart. I say hip bones width apart. The second toe of each foot points straight ahead. Imagine you're hugging your heels towards center and feel the activation of the inner thighs. The thighs are actually back a little as you point your tail down, allowing the pelvis and the legs to be really strong. Slide your throat back just a hair and feel what that's like. Maybe that feels a little stronger, a little more stable. So set your intention if you haven't already. Let this be more than just a physical calisthenics type class. Bring it up from the mundane world into the spiritual world by setting an intention. On that note, let's exhale and bring the hands into our Anjali Mudra. As you hug the legs towards center, keep your tail down, but let's draw the arms wide enough on the inhale, just like we did before. And when you exhale, push it away, get strong all the way down. So you're allowing the breath and the movement to be the same duration of time. So one more like that, hands to the heart. Press into the feet as you hug the legs towards center. On your next inhalation, reach the arms wide and up. And when you exhale, let your left arm come down. Palm faces the thigh, but it doesn't have to touch. Inhale, press into the feet. Get super long on your right side. And when you exhale, you're gonna go over towards the side, but remember the hips don't go to the side. Just keep those guys really grounded through the legs. Make sure you can breathe. If it's too far and you can't really take a breath, come out of it slightly. And then press into feet. Let's all inhale and stand up and reach it really long and exhale it all the way towards the floor. Feel the difference before we move on. Maybe there's a little buzz or a hum. That's the prana starting to move and that's a good sign. Okay, so activate the feet again if you've lost it. Let's reach as you inhale, come up to the sky. Then exhaling, this arm comes down, but keep the length through your other side. Pressing into the earth, inhale, left arm reach, and then exhale and up and over. Keep the head from dropping or collapsing one way or the other. The neck and the head are part of the spine. Keep that in alignment. Hug the legs, press down, and inhale yourself to tall. And then exhale, reach it out and down and let it go. Good. Maybe shake it out those arms. Or if you want, you can even shake out your legs like a dog, okay? So we're gonna do a baby salutation. I say baby salutation. That sounds like I'm making fun of it. I'm not, it's just gonna be a more modified salutation. So again, if you need a little something under those knees, we will be doing some uh, lunges with the knees on the floor. So protect yourself. Let's stand facing the short front end of the mat. Find your Tadasana. Activate through those feet and the legs and get strong. Making sure the thighs are back a little as your tail points down and then slide your throat back. Feel the strength in the stance and know that we're all tapping into this one big root system underneath. We're all in this together. On the exhale, the hands move into the heart, lifting the elbows and the breastbone. Push down, inhale, sweep wide and up. And then swan dive as you exhale, get really deep in the hip crease, then knees if needed, take your hands beside the feet. Inhale, your hands stay here. Right leg goes way back in a lunge. Take your right knee to the floor. If you need, put your blocks under your hands. Squeeze the legs toward each other and everybody inhale the heart lifts or maybe your hands come with your heart on the inhale. Good, exhale the hands down and the heart down. One more time, inhale, lift up heart and maybe the hands. 
exhale, take it back down. We're taking the left foot back, so get your hands on the floor and take your knee back. And you can go into child's pose or downward facing dog. In down dog, walk the knees back, make sure your hands are shoulders width, and you'll take your buttocks back through bent knees towards the heels, lift the knees off the floor, and then let's keep knees bent so the spine can get really long. Head between arms, pretend to say no, pull the front bottom ribs into the body, no overarching the low back. One more breath. Look forward if you're in down dog, bring the knees to the floor. Everybody in child's pose, come to the tabletop. Let's all take our right foot forward. Do the best you can. If you need, use your hand to get your foot up there and walk your left knee back a little. Hug the legs to the center. You can use your blocks under the hands. Lift your heart inhaling, or maybe hands come with the heart. Exhale, reach down again. One more time. Inhale, let's lift it up. And exhale, bring it down. Good, tuck your back toes, show the toenails. Press into both feet as you exhale, you're stepping the back foot forward next to the front foot and you pull. Bend your knees a little, take your hands to the hips and point the elbows up so the front of the armpit lifts away from the floor. Lift your chin slightly and inhale, press your legs straight, but don't come up too fast, be aware. And exhaling, slide your hands down. Good, maybe you're uh, getting a little bit warmer. That's what we want. We'll take a stance to the middle of our mat, facing the long end now. When you're ready with that, take a wide stance, step it wide. If you're able, your legs may be as wide as the length of your leg. For some people that's too wide, your stability will be hampered. So take care of you, make it a little shorter or more narrow. The tip and toes are pointing toward the long end of the mat right now. But what we wanna do is turn your right leg, the heel out to the right, and then turn the toes of the left foot so that it points to the short end of the mat. So all the toes are now pointed in this direction. We're gonna call this our front leg. Warrior two, if you're up drossing a two, we have a very strong stance, sort of hugging the two feet towards center. As you inhale, keep that and raise the arms to shoulder height. Look over your front hand as you exhale, bend your front knee. It's important that your knee not go beyond your ankle. You might need to walk your back foot back a little to keep your knee directly over the hip heel. If you feel like you're getting tight in the shoulders, which is common, flip your palms up to the sky and from the heart expand through the fingertips. Keep that as you take your palms towards the earth again. Give a little bit more attention to your back leg and foot. Also those ribs and hand, which brings your torso to the midline or more upright. Slide your throat back again, one more breath. Press into the feet and lengthen the leg, straighten that front leg as you inhale. Turn the 10 toes to the long end as you exhale the arms down. Pause in the middle, we're ready for the other side. You're gonna push this leg's heel out to the side. Now turn the toes to the opposite short end of the mat. All of the toes point this way. Good, and then notice if the hips turned as best you can without tweaking the knee, have your hips and your shoulders point to the long end of the mat. Let's inhale from the heart, expand out through fingertips and look over your front hand. Exhaling, bend your front knee. Remember the knee is gonna stay over the heel. Slide your back rib cage back and the back of your head. If you want, turn those hands up again like you did before. And from the heart, expand out into the world. Then we'll flip the palms back down. One more breath. Push into both legs, inhaling that leg straight. Exhale, turn the 10 toes towards the long end. Release your hands. Let's take the legs together and shake them out just because somebody might be a little fatigued. And that's when we sometimes can make mistakes, when we try to do things when we're too fatigued. 
So be aware. Okay, so we're gonna add something to that. Get wide again, whatever stance you found worked for you. We're gonna flip this heel out to the right, turn your other foot so it points to the short end of the mat. We're gonna go from our warrior two pose to peaceful warrior, they call it. Some people call it reverse warrior. So the hips and shoulders stay towards the long end of the mat as best we can. Let's inhale and open the arms and look over the front set of fingers. Exhale, bend your knee just like you did before and really activate the big toe mound on this leg, this front leg, big toe mound down into the earth as you take the knee toward the little toe. So that's a lot. Big toe down, keep it grounded as you take your knee away from it towards the little toe. Very good. Now for Peaceful Warrior, typically we drop the back hand lightly touching the leg. Don't really put much weight in that hand. Flip the front palm up and then let's reach. Now you could just go up a little or go all the way to behind you. Some people look down by the back foot. Some people look just to the wall. Some people are able to look up at the sky. If that affects your balance too much or your neck, don't go there. Listen to your body and do what you need today. Remember, we're not leaning into the back hand. Use the strong legs and torso. As you inhale, come back up to vertical spine, arms out over each leg, warrior two. Press down into that front leg as you inhale it straight. Exhale the two, 10 toes, not two toes, all forward to the long end of the mat. And let's go to the other side. Push this heel out, the other set of toes to the short end of the mat. You may notice your legs are getting wider. It happens. Get shorter stance if you need to. Okay, here we go. Inhale the arms to shoulder high kick again. Look over your front middle finger as you bend this front knee. <clears throat> Press the big toe down on the bent leg. Press the big toe down as you take the knee towards the little toe. Keep breathing as you slide your throat back. And then when you're ready, Back hand barely touches back leg. Flip the front palm up and let's go on your inhale and your exhale up and over to wherever it's really available to you. Don't go any further than you can control and don't go any further than you can breathe. One more breath and then push into the earth. You're gonna come back to vertical. Exhale there, inhale straight in the front leg. And when you exhale, turn all 10 toes to the long end of the mat and drop the arms. We'll take the legs towards center and maybe shake them out again. Okay, you got one more in you? I know you do. Some of you may wanna grab a mat, I mean a mat, sorry, a block, um, because there's gonna be three variations for this pose and a block might make most sense. So, put it over here, and it does have three heights, and you're allowed to take it to whatever height works for you for this pose. We're going into variations of Parsvakanasana, which is um, extended angle pose. So from our center stance, Tadasan, we take a wide stance like we did for warrior two. Let's flip the toes to this direction. I think that's your left. Just like we did before, the back foot's sort of 45 degrees, the front foot's 90 degrees. Get solid there first. Let's inhale, extending the arms. When you exhale, go to warrior two, bending the front leg again. Now this time, flip your front palm up to the sky and, and take your back hand to the hip. This is the most modified version and we're just gonna keep adding to two for those who want a little more difficult. From this stance, keep this hand on the hip as you lean towards your front leg, bend the elbow, place the forearm, not the elbow, on this thigh. And then slide your top shoulder blade back, opening the heart. This is your pose. Okay, if you want a little bit more difficult, instead of having forearm, 
on the thigh, you use your block, whatever height, and it's gonna line up with your shin. And you put your hand there, and you open the heart by sliding the top shoulder blade back. And you can bring your hand to straight up, fingers to the sky, palm facing forward, just like your heart. For more advanced, you would extend the arm in a diagonal fashion, so it's from your foot through the fingertips. You might even be able to roll and look up. You can have your block closer or lower, so your hand is closer to the floor. For those who really have a lot of flexibility and strength, the hand can be on the floor alongside your ankle. One more breath. Press into your back foot more. That's the anchor. And then as you come up, push into both legs, straighten that leg, and then release your arms, turn your toes, and let's step together for just a moment. Shake it out because your back foot might have been working super hard, even though it felt like the weight is on the left leg, or the front leg, rather. Um, the back foot's working super hard to ground down and anchor. So be aware of all of that. Okay, so if you're using the block, let's move it to the other side. Whatever height works for you. And again, you don't have to do that. You can use the floor or you can use the thigh. So let's inhale, taking that wide stance again. Press your left heel out to the left and your right toes to the right. I'm sorry, is that correct? Yeah, I thought I told you the wrong thing. Let's inhale and open wide from the heart. Exhaling, look over the front fingers as you bend your knee, warrior two. So flip the back, sorry, the front palm up, your back hand comes to the hip, and you're keeping the strong legs as you bend this front elbow, forearm to thigh, palm still up. See if you can slide your shoulder blade back, opening the heart. Maybe you stay there or you bring your hand up to the sky. Slide your throat back a little. If you want a little more difficult, your bottom hand can come to the block or the floor. And also the top hand can reach more diagonal fashion. Make sure you're anchoring the back foot, the outer edge, little toe side. One more breath. Good, push into both legs, straighten the leg, inhale up. Exhaling, release the arms as you turn the ten toes to the long end and step it together. Good job. Shake, 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 shake. I think we've had enough standing. It's time to come to the floor. If you do have a block, have it close by. We're going to do a couple of bridges, and I would like to use it between the legs. So sit to the side of the feet and bring your feet around, and we're gonna recline on our backs. Take a moment, be grateful that we're at this place in our practice. It feels pretty good to be on the floor, I think. So feel the stability, how nice it is to be supported, by Mother Earth, and by the practice. All right, grab your block or your book if you're using it, and let's put it between the knees. You'll need to walk your feet in pretty close to your hips. Your feet are about hips width apart. Okay? Let's make robot arms. We bend the elbows and we have palms face each other, and we're gonna press the elbow, the tricep, which is the back of the upper arm, and the shoulder. Press those into the floor. Feel how your heart sort of puffs up when you do that. Now keep that as you hug your feet and your thighs towards the center. Press your big toe and your heels to lift your hips into a bridge pose. Your chin is lifted, but not over so. You want to have a little arch in the back of the neck. We call it a mouse hole, but you don't want your chin higher than your nose. You want it even with your nose. One more breath, keep strong legs, and with the breath out, take the hips down, and pause. 
if something didn't feel right, your feet were too far away, or your block kept trying to fall out, or whatever, make your adjustment now. All right, so make sure you can hug the block. Press your elbows, your triceps, your uh, shoulders. As you inhale, we lift the heart. Exhaling, push the feet and the upper arms, lift your hips. Good, stay like that. You can release the arms if you can keep this lifted hip, lifted heart action. Make sure your neck is in that little mouse hole position. Big toe active, not just uh, the heels. That'll make your glutes too tight. One more breath. On the exhale, lead with your buttocks and take it down all at once. You might want to widen your shoulders above your upper body and just get a little flatter. Good, take a pause. We're going to do dynamic bridging. So what that means is we're going to lift the hips and then go up and down with the arms and hips at the same time. Let me do one brief demo. On the inhale, I'll pressure the feet and I'll lift my hips and my arms. The fingers point back to the wall behind me. On the exhale, the arms lift and they come down to the floor alongside the hips. That's it. Let's do four. Here we go. Press into the earth, inhale, lift hips and arms in a fluid fashion. Then on the exhale, take the whole exhale to take the arms up and down and then to the floor. Again, inhale, lifting. Take your time and exhale. Arms move before the hips do. They have to catch up. Two more, inhale. And exhale it down. Fluid, mindful, no tension. One more. Let the breath really flow through, y'all. And exhale when you're ready. Bring it down. Good. All right. Let's remove the block if you had one. Widen the feet about as wide as your mat. And drop your knees towards the center until they brace up against each other. Pause here, maybe close the eyes if you want, put your hands on your belly. And just breathe into this place where your low back is open wide and sort of flattening towards the floor. You don't want to round the low back. Keep it in the neutral spine, so it's the natural arches. One more breath. All right, keep the feet here. If your eyes are closed, open them if you want. You don't have to, but we will widen the knees. And your hands are probably going to move because you're going to drop one knee, let's say your right knee, or your left foot. We're not going to the fore or to the foot, but in the direction of the left foot with the right knee. This feels good, and you feel you want more. See about stretching the right arm back behind you if it's your right knee that went down. Breathe. No forcing, no aggression. We're letting it unfold at its own pace. Then allow the right hand to come back down and point your right knee back up. The two feet did not move, okay? They're still about as wide as the mat. The left knee drops towards the left foot. I'm sorry, left knee towards right foot. And if you want more, left arm reaches back behind you, like you're going to touch the wall. Breathe a couple of breaths. Notice if there's a difference between the first side and the second side. It's not a judgment when we notice. It's being informed. And that way we can honor what it is we're seeing. Let's take the left arm by our sides and then point your left knee up again. Hopefully that felt good. Okay, so walk your feet a little closer toward each other. So it's a little bit more, um, maybe hips width. And doing the best you can to keep your hips from changing too much, let's bring one of the legs in for a hug. 
Your hands will go behind the thigh. Your foot's probably flexed. And let's drop that sacrum. That's the big flat bone right above your tail. Drop that more toward the earth as you do this knee to chest hug. We don't want to roll the spine, lifting the buttocks and flattening the waistband. That's too much pressure in our lumbar. So keep it away from your chest if that's what it takes to get that sacrum back down. Now relax the shoulders, close the eyes if you want. You just feel this pressure, this beautiful release that the sacrum can get when we do it this way. Then take the hands away from the thigh, place your foot to the floor, and we'll do the other side. So the second leg comes in. Know that it's a new story. You might not be able to get as close. Take your hands behind your thigh if possible. Flex your foot. Now see that sacrum. You're sinking it into the floor, maintaining neutral spine. Breathe into any little sensations. Close the eyes if you choose, if it helps you get out of all of that excess in, uh, external world and let yourself go inside. You can either leave the eyes closed or use soft links to open again as you release the hands and your foot will come back down. Okay, so we're gonna do half happy baby. Let's take the first leg up again. It's like we're doing the chest hug, knee towards chest. But this time, if you can, slide the arm on the side of the leg that's up. Slide that arm on the inside of your knee. I'm gonna do the other side so you can see. The inside of the knee and then flex your foot and see if you can grab the little toe side of that flex foot. You want your elbow on the inside of the knee. You might feel the other hip roll up off the floor a little bit. Do the best you can to keep it as heavy and as close to the floor as possible. Then once you have your hand in place, see if you can raise your foot away from your groin till the heel is over the knee. Not a problem if it doesn't go that far. Be where you are. Soften that arm's shoulder. Make sure your neck is still a mouse hole and not with a chin way higher than your nose. Lengthen the neck. One more breath. Good. Release the hand. Release the foot to the floor. We're moving to the other side. So bring your second leg in. Turn the knee out a little. That helps you get on the inside of the knee with your arm. Take it across the front of the shin bone. Grab the little toe side of this flex foot. Take a moment here before you then see if you're able to walk your heel away from the groin so that it's more over the knee. Drop the opposite hip down if possible. Relax the shoulders and breathe. One more breath. All right, release the hand and the foot comes down. We're gonna take it into a reclined, we call it cobbler pose. If you find this is too much strain on your knees or maybe your hips, if you have blocks, or books, you may want to put them under the knee or thigh, one under each. So let's widen the knees. You're on that little toe side, outer edge of your feet, touching the floor. Walk the soles of the feet toward each other and see if you can press them into each other. Allow the knees to widen. Again, if you need, use the block under the thigh or the knee so that it doesn't feel like such a strain trying to come to the floor. You may need to shift your pelvis slightly, bringing your tail a little closer to your heels, but try not to over cat tilt that low back and pelvis. We still want neutral spine if possible. Your hands can simply rest on your hip bones or on your belly or on the floor or on your legs. Just Get out of your head and see where do those arms want to go. 
Let yourself feel it rather than think about it. Then breathe into whatever choice your body made. Let this be a nice little pause. Maybe a sweet, quiet time to rededicate the practice. One more breath. If you need to help your legs, maybe push the outer legs with your hands to bring the knees back to center and the soles of the feet to the floor. Widen your feet a little and get comfortable there. All right, we're gonna do a small twist. Let's cross the left leg over the right leg, thigh over thigh, like lady sit. If it's the left leg on top, we wanna to pick up the hips and move them to the left a couple of inches. See if your right hand can go to the outer left knee or thigh and help the leg toward the floor on that side. Like before, the block can be a big help. If you feel you need something to race against, take the book or the block under the knee or the shin. The other arm, the back arm, might reach way out on the floor. Just drop that arm about as high as your shoulder, like a T. And if you can, you turn the head to look back toward that hand. But if that's too much stretch, just let the head look at the, the ceiling or the sky, or even towards the knee. Find something that's comfortable that you can then drop down into it and breathe. Not a lot of tension that you're fighting. Soften those boundaries, be receptive. One more breath. Turn the head, look at the sky. Squeeze your legs towards center as you roll onto your back. You're gonna to need to push your hips back into the center. Let's uncross the legs. Before we move to the other side, let's extend the legs fully. Flex your feet like your feet are against the wall. So now your knees and your toes point to the sky. Reach your arms back behind, like you're gonna touch both walls, the feet and hands. Big breathing, stretch it open. And then you'll relax the arms back down, then the knees walk your feet in. Okay, so the right leg crosses over the left leg as high up on the thighs as you can. Sit like ladies. Push the hips to the right an inch or two and let your left hand come to the outer knee or thigh. Your right arm is straight out of the shoulder and it's on the floor. As you exhale, turn onto your left hip, bringing the knees across to the floor on your left. Use the block or the brick or the book if you need. See where your head wants to look. This is a new side. It has a whole new story. Don't think it's gonna match whatever you did the first time. Once you've taken care and found the perfect place for you, soften into it. Maybe close the eyes. It helps us get out of our egos when we don't really know where we are in space. As long as we're safe, perfect. Let it go. Breathe a couple more breaths. Let it unfold at its own pace. If the eyes are closed, you may want to open them again. And then roll the head to center and squeeze the leg so you can roll onto your back. Your knees will be up. Let's walk the hips a little to the left. So now we're in, more in an alignment with our spine. And crossing the legs. Stretch the legs out, flexing the feet like you did earlier. Once that's in place, feel the widening across your low back. Reach the arms back, palms toward each other. Keep the inner thighs of both legs rolling in towards the opposite leg and down towards the floor, which is what helps us open the pelvis. One more breath. Release the arms. Bend your knees, bring your feet back in, and let's just take a moment. 
We're getting ready for our final relaxation pose. Shavasana. If you know that being on the back, on the floor this way is a challenge for you, your body's not really able to let go and relax, you may benefit by having your block under uh, the knees, one block under each knee if that's available. Or maybe you'll take your beach towel or your blanket and make it into a roll. And then slide the roll under both knees. So grab your props if you're going to use them. Prepare them the way we just said. Allow yourself to roll back onto your back and then slip the props behind the knees as you extend your legs and widen the legs about the width of your mat. Let your legs roll open a little if that feels okay. Go through what you need for your body to be comfortable. Our final relaxation pose should be relaxing. So if you're fighting it, let that change. Do what you need. Perhaps you need a little tiny something under your head. Not too high. Remember, nose and chin are the same height. They're parallel to the floor. But do take care of you. Your hands can be alongside the body, probably a little bit away from the hips and thighs. I like to roll my palms up as that allows my shoulders to flatten. You may prefer palms down or even hands on the belly or one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart. Go through it. Check it out for yourself. Let it be your practice, the way you need today. Close the eyes if you haven't already. Find your breath. Let every breath help you sink a little more. Remember what Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Let's just take a few breaths in silence, letting your practice Really sink in. Enjoy your breath. Maybe take a deep inhalation and let out a big sigh and pretend your neighbor could hear it. You'll direct your breath all the way down into the fingers and the toes, causing them to move in small, gentle ways. Maybe you'll circle the ankles and the wrists. If you choose, Reach the arms back behind you and we'll take a stretch. And 
then relax the arms by your sides. If you're using props, you'll want to move them to the side. Once those are out of the way, bend your knees and walk your feet in near your buttocks. Let's shift the hips to the left an inch or two. And then allow yourself to roll along to the right side in the fetal position. Your knees are bent. Your hands and your arms might slip under the head or face like a pillow. Let this be a gentle transition back to the room. When you're ready to come to seated, press with your hands into the earth and help yourself up. If you need your blanket under the hip, grab it now. And we'll come into a seated position for the final closing. Once you're upright and comfortable, take the hands into the heart for Anjali Mudra one more time. We'll lift the breastbone and let the thumbs rest on that raised breastbone. We inhale and exhale. And then inhale fully for Om. Oh. Any Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti means peace, peace, peace. We take our thumbs to the third eye. The center of intuition, they say, sits between the eyebrows. We bow our heads downward towards our hearts, honoring that divine spark that's within each and every one of us. To that spark, to one another, we say, namaste. We raise the head to sit tall, we lower the hands to the lap. We open the eyes gently. Know that I'm truly grateful for all of you. My gratitude is full. Every day I know I'm blessed. So thank you for joining me. Let's close our practice the way we always do. I will say my words in Sanskrit and you will reply with Jai. Hallelujah. Om Bolo Sat Guru Bhagavan Ki Jai. Spirit fingers. Thanks, y'all. Know that we are still here thanks to y'all's donations. I've even opened a GoFundMe because there's a program, the Small Business Relief Initiative. Please tell your friends that may want to help a you know local business because if they if everybody takes a little, um, that initiative will match $500. So why not? So go to GoFundMe and look for Acadiana Yoga and Wellness. If that's not your cup of tea, but you still want to support us, we have a way for you to do that as well. Go to our website, AcadianaYoga.com. You'll click on the tab that says Pricing, and then click on Make a Purchase. You'll come to a page that has a bunch of squares and you'll want to click on the classes square. This will give you many options, $5, $10, $15 donation. Anything is helpful. Thank you so very much for joining me today. And we'll be back on Tuesday at nine for fitness distribution. Have a great day. I am grateful. Practice your gratitude. See you later. Thanks, y'all.